In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my eight top tips for shooting slide film. Welcome to the channel, my name is Stephen and I'm a landscape photographer based in New Zealand and I exclusively shoot in film. And I've been shooting slide film now for about three or four years and there's some things that I've learned that I want to share with you that I think will help you with your slide film. And this is really aimed at beginner to intermediate film photography shooters who are looking to start shooting slide film. So the first tip seems a bit trivial and it is load slide film into your camera. If you've got slide film in your fridge, then you should shoot it, load it into your film camera and get out there and shoot it. Uh, take this as my encouragement, permission, with however you wanna take it for you to load that film into your camera and go out and shoot it because if you don't start shooting it, you're not gonna learn, you won't make mistakes and you'll never shoot slide film. So load it into your camera and go out and shoot some slide film. My second tip is use a light meter like this one. This is a spot meter and to keep things really simple, if you have a spot meter, you set the ISO on the aperture to the settings that you're using and you take two meter readings. You take one meter reading from the brightest area in your image, which is usually the sky, and you load it into the memory. You take another meter reading, which is in the shadow areas, not the pitch black areas, but shadows where there's some visible detail, and you take a meter reading. And then you load that into the memory and then you average it out and that will give you the exposure times for your scene. If you don't have a light meter like this one, then use a reflector or an instant light meter and point it up to the sky, take a meter reading um, with the settings, the ISO and aperture settings, and then add two stops of compensation and use those settings. And it works exactly the same. If you don't have a light meter, then download an app from the App Store. I use an app called the Viewfinder app and it's a great little app. Um, it helps with my compositions, but it's also got a light meter built into it and it has a histogram. This is great. I can go in there and I can put my settings in. I can compose my images before I've even got my camera out of my bag and I can see what the light meter says. And I've used this, this app with slide film well and it does work well. So the third tip I wanna share with you is add exposure compensation. You have to add exposure compensation on top of the light meter reading because when you have a light meter reading, it will give you a reading based on middle gray, 18% gray, and that's not always the correct reading that you need, the correct settings that you need to expose slide film. You have to add exposure compensation. You have to move the exposure up, also known exposing to the right, um, to get the correct exposure. Generally, you add one or two stops on top of the meter reading, and that'll give you the right exposure compensation, the right settings. So the fourth tip I'm gonna share with you is use graduated filters like this one here, these are the filters, and you'll see that at the top we've got some dark, and at the bottom we've got some see-through. And this is, a, this is a medium edge grad filter, there are soft edge grad filters, there are hard edge grad filters, and they run from about one, two, three, and four stops. And you slide them in front of the camera, and these are great. I highly recommend you use these, the rectangular ones that you can adjust up and down so you can, and you can rotate them so you can line them up with the horizon. And you use these for controlling the highlights in the area of your image. If you've added two or three stops of exposure compensation to your slide film, the chances are that you are going to be pushing the capability of that film above its dynamic range. Slide film has anything between four to six stops of dynamic range. So grad filters are an essential for when you're using slide film, particularly in landscape photography. The fifth tip I'm gonna share with you is be familiar with the reciprocity failure times for the film that you are using. If you're shooting slide film, it will have a reciprocity failure time. And this is in fact, this is relevant to all films. The chemicals on the film will start to fail the longer it is exposed to light. And it's not the same for every film. Fujifilm Velvia 50 
the reciprocity failure time starts at two seconds. Fujifilm Provia starts at two minutes. Kodak Ektachrome starts at 10 seconds. So you have to be familiar with the reciprocity failure times for your film, particularly if you're shooting landscape photography or doing long exposures. If you're not familiar with the reciprocity failure times of your slide film, then I highly recommend that you download this app. It's called Reciprocity Time and you can get it from the App Store. And it's a great little app. You can go in and select the film you're using. It's got a, it's got a massive range uh, selection of films. You put in the, the time that the meter has given to you. You can even add exposure compensation and it will even work as a timer so you can time your long exposures. Download it, it costs a bit of money. It's not that expensive, but it's great for reciprocity failure times. The sixth tip I'm gonna share with you is find a good E6 film developing lab. Not all film labs are the same. Some labs will only have a three chemical process, which is a more recent process. Traditional E6 film is processed in a six chemical process, and the six chemical process gives far better um, color and pleasing results in your slide film. So make sure you find a good lab and you get them to develop the film for you. The seventh tip I'm gonna share with you is look at your slide film on a light table. You know, there's nothing better than getting your film, your developed film back from the lab and you get your light table out and you start looking at the film on the, on the light table. It's a wonderful thing because slide film will show you how the image will look when it's been um, scanned into the computer um, and even in, printed depending on how you um, edit your film. Um, it's just a wonderful thing. You can get a little lupe out and you can look in and you can look at the detail. It's a must, you have to do it, it's a great thing. Look at your film on a light table. They're very cheap light tables, so just go out and get one. The eighth and final tip is scan your slide film. You have to digitalize it. Slide film is an amazing film. You have to share it with people. People love looking at slide film. Get your lab to scan your slide film. Or if you have a flatbed scanner and a computer, download Silverfast software and scan it yourself. It's quite easy to do. If you want to give scanning slide film a go, please check out my tips and tutorials on scanning slide film on my channel. And I'll leave a, a link in the description section down below where you can go and check that out. So yeah, scan your slide film, load it to your Instagram account, share it on Facebook and Twitter, and just share slide film because it's a bit of a dying breed and it's a marvelous, wonderful experience shooting slide film. And Personally, I really love it and I love looking at slide film images. So that's it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more videos that I've got coming out. I'm gonna be doing a video on how I scan code at Ektachrome. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified when that video comes out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's the least thing you can do. And I hope you have a great week. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye for now.